Hey guys, welcome to a new episode of Photo Redux. The first episode I did was received so well. Thank you so much for that. You know, I uh, I always wanted to do this kind of a show where I take really old photos that I shared at one point many moons ago and redo them with, you know, what I know today, how I've grown uh, the new types of software and utilities out there. And I guess that really struck a chord with a lot of you because like I said, the response has been fantastic and it really energizes me to wanna to do more of these. So rest assured every week, there'll be a new photo redux coming out. And for today's episode, we are going to New York City where I was born and raised. Uh, I'm from Brooklyn, but about, I don't know, let's just say 10 years ago, my parents moved from Brooklyn to Staten Island and they live a few blocks away from uh, this beach with this beautiful boardwalk. And in the winter time, I love going there because there's no one there. It gets pretty cold, but you have these really long boardwalks that are empty. There's no one there. Plus, from a certain point, you can see the Verrazano Narrows Bridge, which connects Brooklyn and Staten Island. Uh, so it's a really cool area. The beach is cool. There's a lot of really cool stuff in the foreground. I'm saying cool a lot. <laughs> But the point is that, you know, I've shot there a lot. The thing is, the photos that I've shared from there, this one was back in 2009, and I used a, I was shooting with a Canon 5D Mark II, and again, my Canon 15 millimeter fisheye lens, my Funk Buster, I absolutely loved that lens. I've since sold it though, uh, and I'm using a Sony kind of fisheye adapter on their 28 millimeter lens, but still. I do really love uh, fish eyes, especially when you get really close and low to a subject. Uh, that distortion can be really cool. However, um, as you'll see when we jump over to the computer, uh, I tone mapped the image because why wouldn't I? And as I got older, I started really asking myself, when is it really necessary to bracket and to tone map? It's okay if you wanna do bracketing, that's fine. In fact, I recommend it in a lot of cases because you'd rather get more exposures than less. Uh, odds are, if one exposure, you know, you can't wrangle the tones in that one and you don't wanna tone map, the odds are that one of the other exposures in your bracket sequence will work. And again, bracketing is where you take a sequence of photos and you're not adjusting your aperture or your ISO. All you're doing is really adjusting the shutter speed to get different exposures uh, so that you can cover the full tonal range. And tone mapping is where you take those different bracketed photos and you, at a pixel by pixel level, uh, compare the exposure values to get what you call an HDR or high dynamic range photo. So with that, what I want to do is jump over. I'm going to show you the original photo, which is pretty terrifying. I cannot believe I actually shared it. And then we're going to start over uh, and edit it with today's tools. So I'll be using Adobe Lightroom Classic CC and On One Photo Raw 2018, which just came out uh, recently to kind of finish it up. So let's check it out. Don't say I didn't warn you, but here's the photo that I originally took in 2009 and shared online and Wow. So let's just take a look at what's wrong with this. So aside from the ridiculously kind of coppery warm tone throughout the image, crushed the shadows over here, uh, over sharpened the uh, boardwalk. And so this is a problem because it just looks awful. I mean, you have like super dark vignette, then this bright patch and then it gets really dark and it's just overall a big disappointment. And again, this is a tone mapped photo. I, I ran this through uh, Photomatics at the time and ended up stylizing like this. I don't know why I did, but you know, I know there are a lot of self-help groups out there and maybe I should have gone to one, but this is what we're going to do here. I genuinely don't believe that this image requires to be tone mapped. Let's go to the grid view. And so I'll walk you through uh, the photo. So here's the zero exposure. And then we just kind of minus two plus two minus one and then plus one. So, you know, I think that we can get everything we need just from this kind of plus one exposure. Looking at the histogram here, we have plenty of tonal information and we can use selective adjustments like a uh, graduated filter tool um, and just any other of the various masking tools in Lightroom to bring this to a kind of a good starting point. So the first thing I'm gonna do is start cropping and kind of adjusting uh, the photo, the composition, because I can see that 
the horizon is kind of uh, tilting upward. And this is a huge uh, result of using a fisheye lens. That's okay. You can see in the bottom corners the way it starts curving. Again, properties of a radial fisheye. So we'll start by pressing R. And I am going to crop in because there is a lot of wasted space. So the initial crop here, let's just kind of go to the awful photo, the one that shall not be named. And you can see I cropped in tight. So there was something uh, worth doing there. Uh, and I agree with that decision. Uh, now, let me just reposition the frame. And I'm going to go down to lens correction. I'm going to enable profile correction. Now, this is typically what happens with enabling a profile correction to a fisheye lens. Uh, this happens very often. If you've shot with a fisheye lens a lot and you apply a, uh, a lens correction, it'll stretch everything out to try to make the line straight because if you turn it off, you can see the lines curve. You know, look over here in the bottom right, and then we turn it on, and the lines are ni nice and straight, and that's a good thing. But obviously, the bench here is... Uh, kind of cropped out of the composition. So what I'm going to do is take this distortion slider and I'm going to drag it in just a little bit until we get the part of the bench in. Now, you know, it if we turn it on and off, you can see it does a little bit, it helps a little bit, and that's pretty much what I'm going to do. Uh, I, I would love to, if we bring this out further, get more of that information. Unfortunately, you know, we don't really, even if I crop or, or I reposition the composition, uh, we're still breaking the edge of the the frame, and I don't like that. So I'll keep that reposition because that'll allow me to keep a little bit more of the uh, the lens correction profile. Now we'll go back uh, into the crop mode, and I'm going to straighten the horizon by rotating just a little bit. We can also see what happens if we go to the transform panel and hit level, and actually. I don't know. I don't agree with it, so I'm going to undo it. Uh, and I'll fix this actually in Photoshop. I'm going to jump into Photoshop for a second uh, to fix some of the kind of stains on the boardwalk. But first, uh, let's go to Spot Healing, which is Q on your keyboard. And then there is this checkbox that if you're not using, I highly recommend it. It's at the bottom here. It's called Visualize Spots. You can also press the A key. And what this does is it'll show you any kind of dust spots in your photo. If you drag the slider to the left, it'll make that less sensitive. In my opinion, it really kind of defeats the purpose. Um, so I like to drag that out. And I can see there's something right here. So I'm going to fix that. Uh, and then I'll go between toggle A um, back and forth. And I think we're okay. If we find any more dust spots, I'll come back and I'll address those uh, appropriately. I'm also going to get rid of this little spot right there. And then I think the rest I'm going to try to fix in Photoshop. Uh, so what I'll do now, before I do anything else, actually, the other thing I'm going to do is uh, go to the top here. Let's close this panel. Now I'm going to get a white balance. So I'll select something like right here in the clouds. Uh, and actually, the white balance is pretty much spot on based on getting from kind of a gray part of the sky. Uh, I'm not going to do anything just yet in terms of uh, local adjustment. So let's first go into Photoshop. I'll do that by going to Photo edit in and then selecting Adobe Photoshop CC 2018. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do in Photoshop is select the spot healing tool. Uh, and I'm going to just kind of like, with my cursor, just brush over those areas. And you can see it does a really nice job. I can fix these breaks uh, in the seams, but I just wanna kind of get rid of those stains. They're, they're really kind of bumming me out. Uh, so we'll just kind of get there and you know, if you didn't know that I was using the spot tool, if you didn't know that there was a stain there after this, if you just kind of like look away and then look back at the photo, it actually does a really convincing job. Uh, like if I just go back in the history and see, I mean, from what we were to where we are now, it does a pretty good job. Now let's go ahead and take the clone stamp tool. I'm going to fix some of these seams a little bit. Uh, let's just go here and just really small strokes. It doesn't have to be uh, too precise. Again, not really my concern, but it's worth at least spending a minute fixing. Uh, also go here and kind of clean that a little bit up. Uh, and overall, I think we're okay. I mean, you can really go to town on some of these spots, depending on how uh, kind of, 
obsessive compulsive you are, and I kind of am, so you get to watch me do this. All right, so now we're good. We um, we kind of fixed everything. Let's go back to that history pane, and I'll go open. There we go. Really cool. Yeah, does a really nice job. Now, before we head back to Lightroom, I want to fix this kind of bending horizon. And to do that, I'm going to go to Select, then All. So that selects the whole image. Then I'm going to go to Edit, Free Transform, and then I'm going to select the Warp tool right here. It's this little button right there. And with this, if I zoom out a bit, now I have these kind of handlebars, and I can pull down anywhere on the image to kind of warp it. And so what I'm doing is I'm kind of getting the horizon straight. And this is looking pretty good. It's looking nice and straight. It's definitely looking better than it was before. Um, and so with that, I'm going to press the check to commit that. And now we have kind of a straight horizon, but it still maintains a little bit of a tilt at the end, uh, just to kind of be consistent with the rest of the photo. So now I'm going to save this and head back to Lightroom uh, to start stylizing. All right, so in Lightroom, the first thing I'm gonna do is I wanna kind of darken the sky, not darken it, but drop the highlights. It's a really bright on the top right. So I'm gonna select a graduated filter and let me start by selecting highlights. So let's, this is a default, kind of like my starting default value. So I'll drop the highlights and the exposure just a little bit. And then from the top right, I'm gonna kind of drag downward and position that graduated filter. Uh, and so you can see we brought out a lot of really nice detail and if I drop those highlights a little bit more, you can see them here. I'm also gonna increase the temperature and warm that up just a little bit. Uh, and then I'll also increase the contrast and the clarity. So that's it in terms of local adjustments. Now overall, I'm gonna open up that exposure just a little bit. I'm gonna add some contrast. I'm gonna bring the white point out just a little bit so that I can kind of cover the tone curve so that the white point reaches the end of the histogram. And now I'm gonna actually go back to that graduated filter. I'm gonna click on it and I'm gonna bring the exposure down a little bit more because the global adjustments brighten that sky back up. All right, now it's time to adjust uh, the tone curve. And so what I'm gonna do is apply what's called an S curve. This is pretty traditional. Uh, what it's gonna do is it's going to add a bit of a contrast boost. So let's kind of go here and then in the shadows, I'm gonna drop down. And if I turn this on and off, you can see how it adds that nice contrast boost. But then uh, similar to what I did in the last episode of Photo Redux, I'm gonna bring the black point up to introduce some gray in the shadows. Just look here, the higher I go, the, the more gray is introduced. We don't want that much, kind of somewhere like right around there. Yeah, somewhere, actually, let's bring that down a little bit more. And the reason why I'm doing that is because it gives you, I wanna get this kind of vintage -y look. And I don't know if I said that already, but there's a specific look that I'm going for here. Uh, I wanna give it kind of that postcard, like you found this picture in a shoebox type of feel. So that helps with this. And then I'm also going to change the channel from RGB, which adjusts kind of the luminance of the tone curve. And I'm gonna go to the blue channel here, and I'm gonna do a reverse S curve. So with the highlights, I'm gonna drop them down and you can see how it kind of introduces a little bit of a warm tone throughout the photo. And then in the shadows, I'm gonna actually increase that and add a little bit of a blue tone. So this is kind of like a split toning, but we're using the actual tone curve instead of the split toning panel, which is kind of cool. Then let's go back here. The histogram's looking good. Everything's looking good here for an overall kind of the look that I'm going for, I'm getting really close. Let's add some clarity overall to the photo, add a little bit of vibrance. In the color temperature, I'm gonna warm it up just a little bit here. And then actually now that I see that, let's go back to the blues and I'm gonna add a little bit more blue to the shadows just to give that really nice split tone look. Then we're gonna to go to sharpening here. I'm going to put my crosshair over an area that should be sharp, something like that. I'm gonna press and hold the Option key and start dragging an, or Alt key uh, on Windows until I start to see those little rivets really pop, which is right around there. And then let's press and hold the Option key while dragging masking, because we don't want sharpening applied to smooth areas like the sky. Um, so let's drag that out until we start to see edges of things, which is right around there. 
And now the last thing I want to do is uh, finish this off in on one photo raw. But before we do that, let's kind of go over to the grid view and we'll just kind of, here's what we started with. This is kind of uh, the terrifying photo from 2009. Here's where we are now, much cleaner, you know, still has a stylized look. Um, the composition itself looks better. Uh, here, I didn't do any sort of lens correction. I cropped in a bit tight, a bit too tight, I would say. Um, so, you know, here, I really like this. So with that now, again, we're gonna bring this into On One Photo Raw, and to do that, I'm gonna go to Photo, Edit In, and we're gonna go straight into On One Effects 2018. All right, so in On One Effects 2018, there's pretty much one thing I wanna do. I'm gonna go to Add Filter, and I'm gonna go to Textures. And there is this one texture in On One Effects that I absolutely love, I use it all the time. I'm gonna change my category from Walls to Paper, and it's called Rice Paper Light. This is my favorite texture. Now you can see that if you look there on the texture, there was some sort of a frame which we don't want. So I'm gonna scale that out by taking the scale slider and drag it out until the frame disappears. Now, we're gonna start kind of adjusting this texture. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to the gear here and change the blending mode to multiply, which does a, a, it's a bit too strong for me. And so I'm gonna combat that by going to the opacity of this texture. I'm gonna cut it to about 40%. And then I'm gonna go to the blending mode of the texture itself, and I'm gonna change that to darker. And that adds a really nice boost to the shadows. And the last thing I'm gonna do is take the hue shift, and I'm gonna start bringing it to the left just a little bit. And what it's doing is it's adding, it looks like it's adding a little bit of kind of a yellowy green tint, and I like that, so watch, let's just kind of undo that and redo it. See what it does kind of in the sky? Undo, redo, it brings a little bit of a cooler tone back, which I really like. And then if we toggle without the texture, and with the texture, it just adds a really nice presence, some more shape in the sky. And we are getting kind of to that, like again, imagine you kind of were digging through your grandma or grandpa's closet and you find the shoebox of photos and you pull one out and here's this photo, this vintage antique photo from Staten Island. You can see Coney Island over here in the distance. It's just a cool photo. I really like the way it looks. So I'm happy with this. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and click done to return back to Lightroom. And then I'm just gonna wrap things up by adding a very slight post crop vignette. So let's bring the amount in. Let's bring that midpoint in and then let's add a feather. And to wrap things up, let's just kind of go to the grid view. I've got my three images selected. Let's kind of compare them all. And so here you can see just, I mean, <laughs> awful, awful photo. I mean, it, listen, not awful. It's just the way it was back in 2009. That's what it was appealing to me. And I stayed true to that and I shared it. But then when you look back, you know, this is what happens when, in my opinion, you start evolving and you start learning your tools really effectively, you get this, uh, really nice kind of uh, the effect. If you just compare the two, it's so much cleaner. Uh, it's more modern. Uh, it just it's not nearly as visually assaulting. And then finally, we kind of use on one and we add a little bit of a texture uh, to seal this up. So I really hope you enjoyed this episode of Photo Redux. Um, again, I want to thank you so much for the positive response to this series. I promise you'll be seeing a lot more of them. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up. If you love it, please hit the subscribe button and that bell to get notified whenever new videos come out. Leave any questions you've got in the comments below, and I will see you guys next time.